Welcome to Happily Ever Aftermath, the podcast where we discuss relationships in movies and our relationships with them. I'm Polina Grinbaum. And I'm Diana Rojek Sconner. Hi, everyone. We're trying something new this episode. Uh, in October, Diana and I were lucky enough to go to LA PodFest, where we met some of our podcast heroes, got a ton of advice and support, and got to meet some people we've been communicating with online and other podcast fans. And it was just incredible. Everyone should go all the time, every year. We even got to be on some podcasts like Radio Brendeman and Movies Made Me, which was a real thrill. So we took the opportunity to talk to a bunch of people about one movie, and the stories we have got are fantastic. Please check the show notes for details about our guests and enjoy. So hi, this is Cheryl, and um, she does an amazing podcast called Movies Thank Made you. Me Thank that you. I love and everyone should be listening to. Yeah. I Everyone. agree. <laughs> Good. Yeah, tell, tell people about your podcast. Probably do it better than me. Uh, it is called Movies Made Me, and it's about the movies that have influenced us to be who we are. So I do an episode every two weeks, and I have a different guest on each one, and they talk about five movies and three other things, anything under the sun, that have influenced them to be them. So, and like here at the podcast festival, I'm just doing one-offs with people talking about one episode, you know, or I mean one movie that influenced them and, and just, you know, everybody has a different story. Even if it's the same movie that everyone else has talked about, everybody's experience with it is different. So it's yeah. really cool. It's just been really fun too, because you've been hanging out in the lab, yeah. which is a really cool, it's just a big area. And you've been so welcoming to like new podcasters like Diana and I. Well, I mean, other people have helped me when I started, when I came in. To, this is my third podcast festival, and the first one that I went to, I walked into the what was at that location, the podcast lab, which I was. I had this image in my head of this big room with like Me too. individual tables, and I don't know what I and I walked in and it was a, a small conference room with a long conference table and people just sitting all around it, and I thought. Okay, so I sat down and set up my gear, and then and then the guys from Radio Brendo Man came in and sat next. To, I saw them; they walked in. They had the same look on their face. I said, "Not what you were expecting, is it?" They said, "No." <laughs> so they sat down next to me, and we recorded with each other. And now we're the stalwarts in here. We come every year, and we rarely leave the room. And yeah, it's a and and you know just having that experience with other people who were here, and them encouraging me, and like seeing that. Podcasting is such a supportive community. Yeah. And that, I mean, that solidified it for me. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm definitely going to keep doing this because, you know, and we could get the bigger podcasters after they did their shows at the festival to come in. Yeah, it's thought, right off the green room. Yeah, that so very that's first, been really cool. That very first year, I had Mark Marin on my show. Oh I was like, God. and all of us afterward, we were like, that just happened. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, oh my God. So, yeah, it's amazing the people that you get to talk with because they support and they know, hey, these are the people who are coming up and we can all support each other. Yeah, it is a really, really nice community. Everyone yeah. I met, I was a little um, apprehensive and my, my partner had come and so she was like, oh, it's not like that. But there's still something really, you know, oh, yeah. crazy because you're like, well, I mean, we don't have a ton of listeners, but hopefully we will. Um, so my big question for you yes. is, what is your relationship with the movie Titanic? Titanic. Yes, and I, 97's Titanic. I always get the year wrong. Is it not? not yeah, Diana. it's 96 or 97. I always get it wrong as well, and I really shouldn't. But so I've been excited about this, and I keep telling you, I've got a different story than anyone else. I've been stalking Cheryl pretty much for the past, <laughs> I would say, 36 hours. Like this is all I do. But she is. She's such an amazing guest. She's so. so. <laughs> oh, I, I feel. Was, I've been, I left another show because I was I, like, maybe oh. Cheryl will be free. Kind of, it was a very good. Show. Show. I just wasn't. <laughs> I always tell people, come in and record with me. And then later, I, I'm like, you didn't come. They're like, oh no. Well, we kept coming in, but you were talking with somebody every time. I'm like, then just wait. Yeah. I don't talk to them for that long. She also <laughs> brings candy. I do. Like, bring there's candy, candy here, so you can. I, I had to restock this morning. I had to go to I Target and buy that. more. So there was Maltesers. It was yes. like international mix. There's, <laughs> there's, there's these really cool um, Japanese Ghostbusters candy. Yes, those were friend, sent by my friend Karina, who was on. Episode four of my podcast, which I was like, 
Even I wow. was astounded by that when I looked at it the other day. I thought, was it really? I was just on my fourth episode when I talked with her. Wow. And now I'm on, I don't know, 60 some odd. And I've recorded way ahead. So I'm so excited about this. But uh, but yeah, so my Titanic. my story, back to get to our point, my story <laughs> <laughs> with Titanic. So uh, in the mid-90s, I was early to mid-90s, I worked in the film industry. Mm. So I did various different jobs. And I got hired on to a movie uh, in pre they did a camera test actually and they hired me as a PA someone that I'd worked with on like a student film or something referred me and so they brought me in for a couple of days and I did that I think they appreciated that I still came the second day when my cat died that morning and oh they were God. like oh your eyes are red do you have allergies I'm like no my cat died and they oh. then they really regretted asking but <laughs> <laughs> often people do but uh, and then they brought me back in in pre-production to work with the first AD and I worked on some storyboards on this movie I was working on the visual effects storyboards and then they brought in a, a visual effects producer who had never worked in production before only mm. in effects houses so they just sort of assigned me to her as her PA because I had familiarity with these boards and I am getting to what movie it is no but, no 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 I like this <laughs> I actually have a bunch of questions about this so what's the but, difference between working in a special effects house and working in, for a production well it's just that in an effects house you're working like on computers and creating Creating those effects for mm -hmm. the film and working in production you're literally filming the movie and filming the the pieces that those effects are going to go into uh, but as the effects producer you're making sure you know because you get the you get the scene but then you also film like a blank a clean slate of it basically where you're filming the location maybe just without anybody in it so that you can you know like we literally this was the saddest thing in this movie but we literally there was a character who appeared throughout the movie he literally got cut out of the whole movie because it was a more adult storyline than what this movie turned out to be mm -hmm. and we literally had he was standing on the porch of a house and we had to literally remove him. I felt so terrible. He had to be removed from the porch. So they used that that clean version of just the house to be able to lay a portion of that over the scene and just pull him oh, out. Oh, I never really thought about that. But of yeah. course, that makes perfect sense. It's yeah. like when you... I mean, I've made little like videos and stuff, and you kind of sure. use a channel. But um, so they do it with like the shots too. So you would have like it's like so you have a pan of stuff with a lot of actors, and then you have a pan of stuff with no yeah. You actors. might, or it might be like if it's a still shot looking at the house, and there's people on the porch, whatever, and there's stuff going on. Then you take one with nobody there. Mm -hmm. And you know they may do it completely differently by now. That was the mid '90s, but that's how we did it then. So, and then yeah, then they can go in with the computers and do it. And a lot of stuff is just like wire removal and things like yeah. that, you know, removing things from the background that don't belong. They added snow to a street in one scene of this movie, and you know, because it wasn't, the director didn't like how the snow had been laid out mm -hmm. in front of this car, so they had to fix it up, you know. Yep. So, um, but yeah, so I, I, I worked on that movie and, and ended up, through the course of time, I was doing the work of a visual effects coordinator more than a PA, and that's mm -hmm. eventually the title that they gave me because the producer left early and I kind of took over part of a role and we were way behind on delivering the effects so I had to like get the director and everybody had to kind of press a little panic button not so the studio didn't know but <laughs> but so everybody internally knew we had to get our act together and we had to do like two visual effects screenings a day with the director oh, to get wow. everything approved and we got it all in on time I do have an autograph poster from this movie that he signed and when you hear who it is he's kind of a big guy but <laughs> Uh, but it was his first feature. So anyway, I was in the editing bay mm -hmm. one day uh, talking with the visual effects editor and the other editors were in there. And and somebody got an email saying when we, what our release date was going to be and what we were coming out against. Mm. And the quote from one of the editors was, Mouse Hunt is going to sink the Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> That didn't really work out that way. <laughs> so not a lot of people saw Mouse Hunt, which is no. the movie I worked on. It was the first movie that Gore Verbinski directed, and he went on to do the Pirates movies, and he won an Oscar for Rango, the animated one. And and so, you know, but, wow. yeah, not a lot of people <laughs> saw it. <laughs> You're right. I was not expecting this yes. at all. <laughs> but, yeah, Titanic. So... 
that might figure a little bit into how I feel about Titanic, yeah, but also I just, in general, and it's not the only James Cameron movie I feel this way about, but I just don't like the movie. I saw it the first time, well, only once, and just thought it was kind of manipulative. Like, I cried, but it's the same it's, as the Phantom of the Opera yeah. musical on stage. I cried, but I didn't actually want to cry. Yeah. I was manipulated into I totally, crying. I know exactly. Actually, yeah. that is how I feel about the movie. Like, yeah. If I could, I would I would actually I would love to see an edit of that movie where yes. all it is is the like the class struggles and yes. and the and the, the the ship sinking. Now, I'm sure yeah. if I watch the ship sinking now, I'd be like, "Oh yeah, whatever." Yeah. It's 20 years ago, right? Yeah. And um I think uh, yeah, I think I can do like, math. Oh, it's been a while. Yeah. Well, Diane is the one who does math. Well, it's, it's around 20 years because that was one of the last credits I, I got out of the industry after that. And I'm just about to get a new credit for something. I had I no idea that. I would go back into the industry. <laughs> just happened. But, yeah, so I'm kind of excited. I'm on IMDb. I'll have, like, another credit 20 years after my last one. I See, think that's, that's so kind of cool. You have to do, like, exactly <laughs> right. And then every, you know, just make it smaller. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just found I just I, the ship sinking. Yes, fantastic. Yeah, oh yeah, fantastic. Terrific. Just that and the, part. The, the real like the the history part yes. of it. Yes, great. Yes, and the social story. Yes, and then but just, get rid of that whole stupid love the story love and story. The draw me like one of your French girls. Oh, shut oh, up! God. I even <laughs> forgot about that. I don't even like. I just, I'm was, king of the world. Yeah. Like, I don't care. I don't care. How many balconies? Like every time someone's on a balcony. <laughs> every time I was in. New New Zealand and I was uh, like um, I was on this like overlook and it was this amazing um, there's an amazing skunk train there yeah and uh, it, this is in the North Island and um, I'm spacing on the name of the island but uh, so it was really it was just so cool and then I you know and you overlook this like jungle and wow, yeah. this beautiful like and people were doing that like seriously <laughs> Yeah, you it know, they do ridiculous. it on they do it on cruise ships, they do it on tall ships. I've been on some tall ships where people do that, you know. I've like, been on tall ships. Yeah, you're like people really do that. I'm like <laughs> really? like the Belt Clutha. There's yes. a, a really yes. great one in San Francisco called the Belt Bal- 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 Val Clutha. I know that one is really that's a hard one to say. I sailed on the Lady Washington. I oh, crewed did you? on I crewed on her oh for my a God, week. God, really? Yeah. Yeah, back in Jesus. Oh Lord, that was 2005. So I yeah, my dream man. Yeah. Like, that's I've, I kind of want to crew on a tall ship. That's my little secret. Well, I can tell you where to do it here in LA to, for free to learn how to sail a tall oh, ship. Cool. So. I'm, le- I'm like leaving tomorrow, yeah. but next time I come, yes. maybe I should just like do it for. We'll a see if there's a. We'll see if they're doing a, an intro thing when you're here, and we'll. Oh, the LA really Maritime cool. Institute does it, so you oh, can volunteer wow. with them and and uh, and learn to sail. A tall ship and go aloft and everything. That's where I I went to them to learn it and then and then sailed for a week on the lady. It was supposed to be two weeks. I only did a week, but you know, yeah, because it's kind of boring actually. Really? But yeah, yeah I mean, it's really neat and it's really cool because you can tell everybody, oh yeah, I was a tall ship sailor for a while, and they're like, whoa, that's really cool. Like yeah, it is, but you know. It but it's really, I really don't, I discovered I don't really like sailing that much, hmm. even though I have a master's degree in maritime history. So Do you it's, really? Yeah. Oh, man. We have so much to talk about. <laughs> you have to go listen to episode one of my podcast, Movies It's Made true. Me. I didn't and actually that's, listen to it. And that's where you learn the whole story of everything that led from the movie Pirates of the Caribbean to my podcast. Oh, man. <laughs> it's I, a crazy story. <laughs> I kind of have this habit lately where I, yeah, I listen to like... I kind of pick and choose. I don't, oh, don't yeah. tend to listen to the first one. Yeah. I used to. Well, I mean, then, it's, it's usually they're pretty bad. And I mean, mine, the sound is all different. And it's just me blathering on for an hour or so. But, that sounds awful. But, you know, every episode has somebody's story. So people are always like, oh, what are your movies? I'm like, well, if you listen to episode one, that's, you know, <laughs> yeah. that's how I know you didn't listen before you were on the show. <laughs> yeah, I admit it. Which I never... I never get mad about because I don't listen to anybody else's well, in time. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's hard. It's like there's so many amazing podcasts. Yes. And there's, you know, I mean, I commute every day, but there's only so much time. Yes, you're working on your own show, you're yeah. doing your job, whatever, and yeah. yeah so. My job doesn't like it. I mean, sometimes I actually do listen yeah. to podcasts on the job. I admit it. Um, but so do a lot of other people. But um, yeah. So, yeah, so you never got into it. Was it... Okay, so that was such a big movie, and people were so obsessed with it. I don't know if you ever 
Um, and I, I've heard some really great stories about oh, it. I, obviously, you and I kind of feel the same way about it. But <laughs> I and I did not have a movie competing. It wasn't my first big movie, and it was competing. I, I was just like, I, I was it, just like, why, why do I have to talk about this? Uh, I just never got it because I was like, yes, it's pretty, but it's boring. It is, and it's boring, and it's manipulative, and. Yes. And no, I would literally when it when both movies came out, there were a couple times I was at movie theaters and I would go in and check the crowd and mouse hunt and there were like six people in there and they weren't laughing. They weren't laughing where they should have been. But <laughs> but just so people know, that movie had a much more adult theme originally and that's why oh. that guy got cut out. And it was really funny. And then it through test screenings it turned totally into a kids movie and like a family movie and yeah. I really there's a scene uh, where they come to the door Lars and what is her name April whatever they break up and there a guy comes to their house and she answers the door and she's dressed in a nurse's uniform mm-hmm. and that's totally out of character for it because she's a real manipulative money grubber why would she be a nurse it's because there were three times that people came to the door after the breakup mm-hmm. and this this other character was her new boy boyfriend and you would they come to the door and you would hear them upstairs having fun and every time she came down she was in a different one time she was dressed as a nun one time as a nurse and then there was some other one and so it was a joke of you know what they were playing at up there and yeah oh, <laughs> much more adult that sounds that really all good cut, actually so. <laughs> i think i would have enjoyed that one yes, a lot i would have too what the stuff i saw of it in the editing room oh, so man, i was like this should be like really the adult funny. the yeah the explicit cut of Mouse i know Trap. i want them to do a director's cut but i don't think it's a popular enough movie because of titanic team titanic <laughs> now do you like when it came out like did you yeah. feel that awkward thing of like the passion people felt about it and your sort of like kind of deadness. It was like a hard film. I felt like it was yes. a hard, it's not, I mean, it was a hard movie to be like critical of at the time because you just kind of felt like you were, I don't know if oh, you yeah. experienced that. No, like, I, yeah, people. Because you were living in LA, I was living yeah. in San Francisco. People just were a different really ball game. into it and like, oh my God, Titanic, and I've seen it five times, I've seen it 10 times over. I'm like, it was okay for one viewing. I yeah. never need to watch it again. So yeah, everybody Selfish. was yeah. Well, everybody was so excited, and I just couldn't. I couldn't. Yeah. Relate. Yeah, I couldn't yeah. either. I just I felt very outside of like I, think I often do, but like I felt very outside of like, <laughs> yes. the place I was living. Because even friends of mine that I, you know, were more into sort of indie films and were more into just into very different things. Yes. You know, there were there were definitely the like pop culture detractors, but I was sure. really shocked at how many people were really into it. Yeah. And I was like, is there something wrong with me that I'm not like well, I know you more ask romantically yourself, yes. inclined, I guess, because I am a really romantic person. I like love my husband. I, yeah, I'm well, super I'm mushy not, about different things. Well, I don't. Yeah, because I never, I never had that kind of oh romance thing, and yeah, you know that either. whole growing up wanting to have the the princess wedding and the like. Yeah. So I don't get the whole gushy I don't either. You know, I enjoy romance movies that are funny or that mm-hmm. are a little more realistic. But yes. the big, epic, sweeping, you know, soft, filtered, uh, you know, I, I just, I can't go there. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't like the big, like, Dr. Zhivago and things that mm-hmm. everybody else loves. So I'm yeah. like, I can't get into those big, epic, sweeping love stories because that's not real. And I want yeah. something that at least feels a little bit like something you can connect to in real life a little bit. I think so, you know? too, yeah. And yeah. I, I don't like it when um, movies shoehorn in love stories. Like, yes. I mean, yes. this is a good one. Like, I'm, I remember, like, wanting... I actually... I, I really liked Master and Commander. Oh, God, you know I love that movie. After I was going to say, yeah, you, exactly. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> and the thing that I kept, like, putting off seeing it, and I... Because it's a procedural about fucking ships. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, but uh, one thing that I realized, like... I was I was so afraid that there was going to be a love story shoehorned oh, yeah, into it, yeah. and there wasn't. No, and I well, just and, could relax and, and even enjoy when the you, ships. Even if you read the books, it's based on That's, the Patrick I've O'Brien books. Yes, book, so there yeah. are love stories in there, but they're far more realistic. Although I have to say, the Diana character that's a running. Love interest for Stephen Matterin, the Paul Bettany character in the movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, I couldn't stand her because she was a lot of that, like 
Yeah. Well, also she just was mean to him. That's really what it was. But uh, and I thought, don't don't keep being in love with her. She's so awful to you. But but it doesn't ever turn it into that kind of big sweeping love yeah. story. There's much more groundedness. It's more realistic. So yeah, yes. I like that too. But I do. I agree. I like that they didn't put any of that in the movie. I do feel yeah. like as I get older, I'm getting like mushier about that stuff, though. You do a little bit. Yeah, it's weird. I don't know why. Maybe Not, I'm just I like. Don't know. I mean, I still I get more impatient when yeah. it's shoehorned in. I think I get actually when I. I mean, my experience is different because I like I I basically in my adult life have never had a boyfriend. Like mm. it's just a weird. I don't know why it's gone this way, but whatever, right? Yeah. But so, but but the only time it really gets to me is when I'm watching one of those mm. big romantic movies, and mm-hmm. it actually it'll make me both sad and angry because I'm like that doesn't exist. Yeah, and doesn't. I don't like that you keep telling me it should because it doesn't, and and that's not. I mean, all the people I know who are in love, that's not how it goes. No. And then certainly for me, there's not going to be some big sweeping moment like, you know, I get really angry about it. Like, stop doing this. That's not. That's not true. This isn't true. Yeah. It's a movie. It doesn't have to be true. But I get, I, I, I have know, my hang-up, right? Like, yeah. yeah, there's a certain thing that I can't, like, a certain suspension of disbelief I can't have. Right. And I think I actually, I felt that way when I was a teenager a lot. Like, yeah. stop throwing this stuff at me in my 20s. And I have, I've been, um, I've been to, but my husband and I have been together for 23, 20, 22, something like that. Wow. Sorry, I can't even really keep That's track. great. Yeah, it's really random. I'm, I don't know how this is. He doesn't like change. It's good for me. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Whatever it's works. It's all working right? out. Um, but, but I feel like, I sort of feel like those movies take the, like what angers me is they, they, they sort of take the, um, Okay, so my, my godson is super into uh, he's super into romantic comedies he's yeah. like 21 he's 21 now yeah. and um, I know that I didn't mean if you're listening Jack I, I know how old you are um, <laughs> I didn't mean to sound questioning um, and he I, sometimes I'll watch him with him and I'm never into it but I'm always like these people are insane but um, or just stupid and not interesting and yeah. But there's, like, always some character in the background of, like, some couple. So it's, like, the mom and the dad of somebody. And I'm like, why don't they make a movie about those people? You know? Like, they seem really interesting. Right, like, right. they I lived. Wanna, I want to learn like, about yeah. them. Yeah. And yeah. I want to know how to keep a, like, a relationship interesting for a yes. long time. Like, um, so I find that to be much more... Like, th- and that... Because I... I feel like it's not that way. I feel like it is these little things. That, yes. So definitely. I guess it maybe bothers me a little, but yeah, I just yeah. There's there's kind of a um. There's also like this thing where when you, especially when you rewatch movies, certainly were popular like uh, in the eighties when right. I was a teenager. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Um, you remember all those? Oh yes, I do. <laughs> yes, all those. They, I mean, they were a little less, actually, I find them a little more annoying. Like, I find the ones now a little more annoying. But the yeah. one thing I noticed, too, is that um, these big romantic gestures, and we were talking about this with a friend of mine, yeah. um, who's, fan- who's so fantastic. Um, <laughs> just great. like he's some of my favorite conversations. Go to. He got <laughs> about books. I think oh, I yeah. mentioned this on your podcast, too, so I'm going to cut this out of mine. But um, I find that the modern ones, like, um, the grand romantic gestures are creepy, Oh, yeah. If you don't feel the same way, they're oh, only yeah. grand and romantic. If the guy is standing below your window holding his oh. stereo up and playing, you're like, go, well, go away. I'm going to call the police. It's what three is in the that? morning. I have a test tomorrow. Yes, like, like, I need to sleep. I don't like you. Go away. <laughs> they're stalking me. Yeah. Oh, a lot of this stuff or, in the movie. And, I mean, it's or very... like your boombox sounds terrible. Yes. It's really tinny from far away. <laughs> and this is my favorite song. <laughs> right. You're ruining it for me. And now I don't know how to talk to you. Yes. I mean, they're really fun things to watch. But, yeah, but if people then, and some people did go out and try to try to kind of do what they saw in the movies. Yeah. Yeah, it's just creepy in real life. You can't do those movie things in real life. No, you cannot. Yeah. It's weird. It's, yeah, save your romantic gestures for people you know. Right. Love you back. That's my, <laughs> our, our tip. And and 
make movies about an interesting people. Absolutely. Rather than just like, we need to have a love story that sells it. More Master and Commander movies, please. We've yes. been begging forever. Oh my God, I know. Why is there Russell only one Crow of those? Russell Crowe wants to do it, and does no he? one else does. Yes. Everybody just, yeah, beg. More I don't know Jack. how you like beg. How do you beg for them? things like yeah. more Master and Commander movies? Yeah. You live here. How do you do it? If you want more Master and Commander movies, I don't know. what do we, you do? People tried online to tell the studio they wanted more, and Russell Crowe has, has said he's tried, and the studios aren't interested in putting money into it. Peter Weir doesn't want to direct another. Mm. I think Paul Bettany doesn't want to do it. It's just Russell Crowe going, I really want to play Jack Aubrey again, yeah. and it was really cool, you know, and, and the ships are still around, and they could use different ones. People are saying, do one of the ones that's got some sailing but has more stuff ashore as well which oh, is really interesting idea. stuff yeah. in the books and then you don't it's not as horrible a filmmaking experience because mm-hmm. doing anything that's on the water like Titanic I guess is really can be really horrible they filmed yeah. they filmed a lot of it in the in the tanks at the Fox thing down in in Baja California uh-huh. the same place they did Titanic so there's oh, another tie Hey, there's so, another tie See, we're going back to Titanic. I, I think you can go down there and, like, they have tours to it for the cruise ships. You know, you can take a tour and go and see, and they still have some of the, like, the ships in the tanks and stuff from both movies. So My husband was telling me some horrible story about he went down to, they did a big road trip through Baja, and yeah. he was saying that, like, he went to some Sea World, which I think was then. Oh, yeah. And this was, I think, I think it was like it might have been actually the same place, and he was like, "There's nothing more depressing than a Mexican." Oh yeah, no, I no, those places are bad enough here in the states. Yes. Yeah, you don't want to. Oh. That just doesn't sound good. Yeah. Not yeah. good. Thank you. So, I won't keep you any more, but um, thank you so much. I've really enjoyed talking to you. Yes, and I really enjoyed about it too. So <laughs> thank you for having me on because oh. this was fun. Yeah, this was super fun. Well, we'll we'll have to do it again next year. We'll, we'll ask another movie. The the uh, hopefully the festival will happen again next year and definitely we will both be here definitely (laughs) thank you so uh, we are here at LA Podcast Festival and we are so excited to have Murray Valeriano I'm excited that you got my name right (laughs) tried so hard practice in my head that was great so here is the question yes our podcast Happily Ever Aftermath has been going around making the rounds and asking this very important Mm -hmm. cultural question what impact did the movie Titanic have on you? What is the relationship you have with Titanic? Oh, I have zero relationship with the movie Titanic. None whatsoever? No, yeah, no, I just, I saw it. Um, this is fascinating. Yeah. So you managed to come at people in so many ways, seeing it in the theaters constantly, or there was so much backlash, they decided to rail against it and hate it like crazy, and you're just neutral. I'm neutral. You're I, neutral. I'm neutral. I, uh... Yeah, I'm neutral. <laughs> it didn't really affect me either way. No way. No, no, it didn't affect me either way. And um, I hate. I didn't like the theme song. I didn't like the big <laughs> song from it. That kind of irked me, hearing that over and over. Okay. Um, I do like the fact that the guy who did the sound, like the guy who produced the soundtrack, uh-huh. and it, I'm 99 percent sure this is true. Like, did it for either super cheap or nothing, and just got the back sales end on it oh, and then wow. it just went through the roof and it made him a bazillion dollars so he did like an Alec Guinness thing in Star Wars where he's just like I'm going to take a percentage oh did, is that what Guinness did oh that, as is my understanding okay yeah that sounds familiar oh if I got that wrong I'll just have the internet correct me yeah I know and yeah. I'm sure your listen, my so, listeners okay. love to correct me so well see I, now I need to figure this out there so and find I out s- Titanic I, guy had and I want to say maybe it was Carter Burwell who uh let's, I have a Google on my phone not to brag <laughs> But I'm going to do it right now. No. Is that all right, or is this bad oh, no. podcasting? No. You're talking about it. If you could be entertaining while you Google it. <laughs> oh, wait. Hold on. I can't even Google, let alone be entertaining. Hold on. Carter. I think it was Carter Burrell. Oh, okay. so, so I might be wrong. So, but you like the soundtrack? No. No? I just like the fact that he made a bazillion dollars oh, off of it. So <laughs> just taking a piece of it. Yeah. You know, because, you know, they're, you know, they're... Did you see it? Well, oh, here's here's something that's pretty common. Okay. But did you see it with somebody for somebody, or were you curious about the movie? Uh, I saw it with a friend of mine. I think I saw it with a girl named Amanda Cotter. Okay. Who, uh, who you, I knew from the open mic stand up scene. All right. And um, yeah, yeah, 
Now I remember. Was it? Oh, and Billy Zane was in it. Oh yeah. He's the bad guy. Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. He's bald. Uh, he's bald in, in in regular Billy Zane world, but he actually had hair in this. Movie. That's it. That's it. I knew there's something <laughs> going on with the hair. Yeah. No, he's better bald. <laughs> right. You like him better bald? Well, yeah. You can't. I don't want to. I don't want to draw lines in the sand here on your podcast. I don't want to start fights. <laughs> but guys can't pull off fake hair. They can't pull off toupees. No. They just can't, and they can't pull off dyed hair either. Um. No. That's so. Is there is someone popping in your head at the, as you speak of the dyed hair? Well, I just I got into it with Jimmy Dore last night on my show about it because he openly dyes his hair and I obviously don't. Okay. And uh, but you just can't get it. When my wife has a theory, it's because men's hairs grow grow so fast they get cut Constantly. once a month. Yes. You know, my wife goes gets her hair done once every eight months and it's an all day affair. Sure. You know, I hit the thing once every so you can't, they can't keep it up. So they do it themselves at home, mm-hmm. and then that's why it doesn't. And then it looks as artificial as the chemicals that yeah, are in their scalp. Okay. I'm sorry, is this the Hair Talk podcast? Oh, did I not? <laughs> that's actually launching next month. Oh, okay. Yeah. All, right, all right. Okay. I'm sorry. We got to get back to Titanic. Yeah. I apologize. Well, okay. So you got into it before, but your podcast, Road mm-hmm. Stories, where can people find that? Uh, roadstories.tv, iTunes, Stitcher, all the. I'm part of the All Things Comedy Network, so you can go over there and catch it. It's great network. What? Great network. Yeah, they're awesome. I turned down many networks. Okay. Uh, well, not many. Ooh, I said it really far. There. But uh, no, I turned down a couple of networks, and then yep. they just came along, and they were great. They're run by comedians, so they know uh, what to do and what not to do. And they're, mm-hmm. we're doing our big first big uh, comedy festival in Phoenix next month. Ooh. So I'm very excited about that. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thank you so much. So, neutral on Titanic, appreciate the back end dollars made. Mm hmm. Nothing really stands out to me either. That's interesting. Yeah. And I want to thank you for being the first. Oh, am I the first neutral Titanic? Uh, the first uh, set of people we asked instantly eyebrows shot up. I have a story to tell oh, you. Oh, really? Absolutely. Wow, I got nothing. No, oh, no. I we, did... we need to know you exist. Okay. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. Oh, well, thanks for having me. All right. Thanks a lot. You take care. Hi. Um, we're recording live at LA Podfest. And uh, we are talking to Casey. Do you want to introduce I'm yourself? I'm Brendan. Brendan. Oh my God, why did I do that? That's okay. I do that all the time. No, Casey, I do you that too. I should drive. I should drive? I should drive. Where's Casey? I don't know. Oh I'm my just God. being crazy. <laughs> okay, fine. Um, okay, so we are at LA Pod Fest, <laughs> and we are very happy to have Brendan. But yep. it was, can you, I'm, I'm so sorry that my memory is horrific. Can you give, give the listeners your show again? All right, my name is Brendan Creasy, and my podcast is Radio Brendo Man. Radio Brendo Man. I have I a couple know, podcasts. I, Casey. I don't know. Because it was, I heard Crease, I heard your last name. Yeah. Still it's okay. I know. Brendan Casey's fine. Casey's <laughs> fine. Um, but uh, yeah, and then I also have a podcast called The Massive Buds Wrestling Show for all the wrestling fans out there. Very nice. Alrighty, so here is the question of the pod fest. I'm very excited about this. Okay, what is your relationship with the movie Titanic? Okay, I am a very, I, I don't know if I'm as much anymore, but I was a very hopeless romantic person, and Titanic is the ultimate movie for romantics, and I actually, like, I... I was a. I loved the movie when like it came out. I loved it. I thought it was just this amazing feat of cinema. I loved Kate Winslet. I loved Leonardo DiCaprio. I was all about it. I didn't. I went a few. I loved the fact that it was three hours long because that's you know I'm, I'm, I love like I'm, I got more more bang for your buck because as a high school student I'm like I get three hours of movie yeah, for the pre, you know that's a lot and I love I thought it looked amazing because like what was that ninety eight yeah yeah that's right. And that was just like at the time. I mean, like I'd never seen anything like that before, yep. and it was quite the spectacle. And I know there's a lot of like hatred out there. The story's a little goofy. There's a lot of it. Then upon when you look back, you're like, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> What's happening here? Like, but I just I really liked the look of it. I loved all the bit characters. <laughs> there's so many great actors involved in that project. And I also that was the first time I had read like Hollywood Insider news because like Ain't It Cool News was just happening and stuff and like I had just started getting on the internet right. mm-hmm. like a couple like I think I got on the internet like I got AOL in like '96 okay and uh, so I started doctor. getting on I'm a big giant nerd and <laughs> um, and like I was um, and so I had gotten on Ain't It Cool News I remember reading about the food poisoning incident oh. on the set where like, pe- like people they got somebody dosed something with PCP. 
and like oh my God, people really? got like violently ill on the set. They think it was like an angry crew member because like the conditions when they filmed that movie were like awful because oh, they geez. they filmed down in Mexico so they could skirt a lot of laws oh. and like they were working like crazy hours and like non-union stuff and oh, wow. like and they're they're in the there water were some, in the middle of yeah the night. so there were some angry apparently there was some angry crew members or something and they laced something in craft services with like PCP or something and people like got violently ill and I remember reading about that and then it was also the first time that that like that movie made Harry Knowles like ain't it cool like oh by the way like now I'm really we were just talking about like Harry Knowles is a scumbag like apparently like with an allegation yeah and and I've and I see somebody I've met and like I've been to one of his but numathon film screenings um and so I'm very disappointed um but that was one of his rise because he got people went to the Titanic test screenings like in Minnesota and so he got early it was the first place you could read about it yeah. and that was when that all like start that whole wave of like he ended up on like magazines and news and like so it was a big thing yeah. but then my pers- my more personal <laughs> story with Titanic is um, the soundtrack because I mean that was a huge oh. soundtrack Interesting. and I is a young closeted boy <laughs> Was a very large, big Celine Dion fan, and um, I love that song. I love it. I watched that music video over and over again. Wow. Um, I it's so cheesy. Like I know it's cheesy, but I was it's a. So full. I bought. I remember I went and bought that CD at Target, and the <laughs> the checkout guy made fun of me, <laughs> and uh, and then I just played it in my car. Target. Played it in my car on repeat, yeah. and. Um, I had talked to you earlier mm-hmm. about the girl I took the prom with. Yes. Um, but uh, so um, on our show, the, this girl I took the prom with, but um, she, um, we film. I, I, I was a video film nerd, and um, for my youth group, uh, we used to do like skits and stuff, and like a variety type show. Yeah. And I made parodies of all the Oscar movies, my friends and I, and I filmed them and edited and everything and we made a Titanic parody that we stole most of it from Cracked Magazine. Um, Like it was just dumb stuff like when they're spitting off the rail like it flies back in their face and we made like egg and like they're all like hock the lugas and then like you know like they're doing I'm King of the World and he just pushes Rose off the bow. Just dumb stuff like that. Or like the big poker scene when he wins the they're playing Go Fish like just dumb goofy (laughs) stuff and like then there's like the big Sex scene and they're like oh screaming and we had them like we used my my friend Jenny's uh she had a classic Mustang because it was like a classic car yeah, they had the big yeah. sex scene and we did the hand but then it turns out they're just like eating like really good they had like a banana and like some food like this is so good I'm like Ugh. like just dumb dumb high school yeah. stuff like that just and for a giggle. yeah but then um, I don't know if this is some weird serendipity but the first date I ever went on was a freshman homecoming dance. And our, the last dance, it was the only time she let me dance with her. Cause oh, she, said, wow. she said she didn't believe in slow dance. Oh, my <laughs> God. It was terrible. Um, and, but then I, she, I think she, one of some of her friends were like, you, you need to dance with your date at least once or you're a monster. Aww. And I think, so I think they find, so the last dance, yeah. and it was the power of love. And oh, wow. so that was my last dance of my first date. And then my senior prom. And like, so through a series of circumstances, I ended up going to senior prom with this girl that I was very much in love with. And, but she did not reciprocate oh, the feelings. Great. And it was one of those situations. Oh, yeah. But um, our last dance was My Heart Will Go On. And I was like, it's serendipity. Oh, and that's one of the God, reasons why I was convinced. I'm like, it. this is a sign. I need to tell her how I feel because this is a sign. And like, Simon yeah. From Celine Dion. Yeah. Now, did you so watch So Celine Dion bookended oh my, God, my high school dances. dances. Wow. So what was it like? What was it about? So what was it about Celine Dion? That I just you like that just voice. It is so strong and beautiful. And I think it's because I started. Um, she, little known fact, one of her first like early music when she was just a Canadian singer, she did the songs in a movie called The Peanut Butter Solution. It's this goofy ass. Um, it's one of if you look at the scare like creepy kid movies, mm-hmm. oh. it's one of the all time. It's about a kid who goes to a haunted house. It's a bonkers movie. It's a Canadian <laughs> TV movie, but it was a big video store movie when I was a kid in the eighties. Mm-hmm. Okay, and so this kid 
goes into a haunted house. It's like there's a fire, and he goes. He gets dared to go in the haunted house. He sees a ghost. He gets so scared, all his hair falls out. So then he wakes up in the middle of the night in his house, and the ghosts are there, and they teach him how to make this thing called the peanut butter solution that grows his hair, that will grow your hair back, except he puts too much of it on, and his hair won't stop growing. Then he gets kidnapped by his art teacher, who's secretly a madman, and he, he kidnaps him and uses, he cuts his hair and uses it to make magic paintbrushes that when you paint, it turns the painting to life. And then he uses the magic painting to go back in the haunted house and face his fear. And that's that's the peanut butter solution. So wait, so Titanic brought you to the peanut butter solution? The vice versa. Oh, the peanut butter Because Celine Dion, I was familiar with Celine Titanic. Dion. I think that was my first exposure to Celine Dion was those songs. So when I got into her, and my mom was a big Celine Dion fan. Uh. And so we had the albums. And I love the power of love just because that was the last first and last time I got to dance with Ashley Taylor. And... Uh, um, and then, and then I just like the Titanic soundtrack was such. I mean, that was everywhere. That was huge. Was I think it's like one of the best-selling soundtracks yeah. of all time. Just, but it's also just because of that song. Yes. Like nobody gives, like, nobody cares about that because it had the CD had like the score, I think, and that song. It was the only actual song on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But like that's why everybody bought that yeah. CD. I mean, it's a good score, mm-hmm. but it's. Not, I mean, I, it's fine, you know. But that song, man, um, and so that was it. And I just. I don't know. That movie was such a big event movie. I remember yes. I went with a ton of friends and How like. Many times did you I go? think I saw it. I want to say four times. Okay. In the theater. Yeah, in the theater. Mm-hmm. Now, when you think about it now, like when we asked that question, I have no desire to watch it again. So excited, none. I don't really, because it, one, it's three hours long, <laughs> and the big selling point when you were younger. Yeah, but now, now I'm like. Ugh. So, I mean, I've watched it, but it just doesn't have that. Of course. Especially because now it doesn't look as like because now it's like watching Toy Story. Yeah. The CG just looks right. like it. Like what the? Looks ah, like, it's, yeah. like it's yeah. like it's yeah. Like you watch Toy Story, it looks like a bad PlayStation game. Oh, <laughs> God, I haven't rewatched it. So when you like, what scenes do you think about when, oh, like, man. when we ask that question? What um, scenes came back to you? For me, it's um, I'm trying to think. I love like when he takes. When he takes her down to like the like the peasants area and yeah, like just I don't know and then the like and then just and then I just got like their relationship like they fall in love on that boat and like for me it felt because they I just I love Kate Winslet she's yes. so good right. and like it was believable and also like Leo was huge I love Romeo I saw Romeo and Juliet in the theater more than I saw Titanic oh, I think I watched that like six times wow I was obsessed because I love Claire I love Claire Danes yeah. I love the soundtrack uh-huh. I love Baz Luhrmann I love like everything about that movie yeah. and so I was like I just got really and so because of that I was kind of I was really into Leo also I love Growing Pains I mean come on you watched mm-hmm. it in hell Rome. yeah oh wow that is like old I school watched fandom. Growing I watched Growing Pains because it was like on and yeah. we didn't have a lot of choices all the time no, I know that but like you know just being the fan of the whole Leo in yeah Rome I was pains. definitely down with Leo I was a Early I was an eating Gilbert grape. Eating what's eating Gilbert grape? Oh I mean, god, oh my god, so grape. good. So good. Did, did you watch Critters Three? Yes. Really? Oh man, you I dug did. that. Oh, I, okay, my because again, my brother and I were video store like like that was our babysitter oh. and like ho- bad horror movies like all the Critters movies, the Ghoulies movies, just all those goofy. Oh, yeah, wow. like. I love the way you put that. The video store was my babysitter. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. That is a podcast. Oh yeah, the video store was my babysitter. Yeah. That's very cool. So uh, there was some allusions to some conversations earlier, and that we'll be able to listen to on yeah, Radio, Radio Brendo, Brendo Man. Man, RadioBrendo.com, or just look at Radio Brendo Man on iTunes, all the podcasting, Apple Podcasts. I got to remember that. Apple Podcasts. But the thing, okay, I'm sorry, this is a little side beat, oh, no, but no, no, if you own a Macintosh computer, it's still exactly. iTunes. Exactly, that is so confusing so for people. Shut I mean, the, for me, it's still, I still call it iTunes. If I don't have an iPhone, so I don't even I don't even use Apple Podcasts. So for me, it's still iTunes. Like, yeah. so I don't know. Get your shit together, Apple. <laughs> I know. I know. Pick a lane, Apple. Pick a lane. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. So this much. is great. Yeah. Thank you. Just for a little bit of clarity, because we're still doing the popping back and forth thing, so we're not too great at this. Gotcha. So for just right now. 
We're here at LA Podcast Festival, Ooh. and I am so, so happy right now that I got to meet in person. And of course, I'm having this right now, Elisa Lucas. That is correct. Good job. Dr. Elisa Lucas. That's correct. And I'm, and I'm drawing it up very long because I'm so paranoid about getting names right. Especially when I correct people. <laughs> That's fine. As you should. It's the only way people will learn. Yes. So... This is what I would like to ask you, yes. as I've been asking other people all day. Okay. What is your relationship with the movie Titanic? Oh, Do you want to know? Because I hate Titanic. <laughs> Keep talking. Okay. Um, here's the issue. Number one, Leo DiCaprio fit on that freaking thing that she was thinking on at the end. And it <laughs> pisses me off. Can I swear on this podcast? Yes, of course you can. Okay, good. Because that was bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I do enjoy... Like the idea and what James Cameron was trying to do, but I just, oh God. I, I listened to him talk about it. it's supposed to be like Romeo and Juliet, and I'm like, wrong. No, it's not. Um, he already did Romeo and Juliet. Yeah, so just, you know, get over it. And then I would just say, too long, too long of a movie. And, you know, I wanted something a little bit more, I guess, impactful considering this massive like historic event that they were basing this relationship in. And I mean, I guess there's going to be some level of here's, you know, Kate Winslet and here, you know, here's Rose and here's, what's his name? What's his name? Jack. Jack. Okay. Thank you. See, this is how much I'm like, I, and I love Leonardo DiCaprio. Okay. He's one of my, like top three. Okay. So, okay. I'm sorry. Top three. Where is he? Probably one. Okay. <laughs> okay. So he's number one. <laughs> number one. But I also love Idris number? Alba. He's, is he number two? You know, my I would say they're top two, and then you don't have to rank. Ranking and then is hard. and then you give me a name, and I'll be like, oh yeah, they're in my top ten. But you know, Leo Leo is definitely a consistent and a okay. con- constant. Um, I've enjoyed all of his movies as probably my least favorite one. Oh, okay. and when I saw that movie, even it came like out, Blood Diamond. Oh, with the bad accent? Yeah, I'll watch that crap <laughs> over Titanic any day. All right. <laughs> Are you kidding? Hello. <laughs> Um, but that one, I just was like, it's just, can I say pretentious or just like over the top and I'm king of the world. I'm like, okay, fine. And it just, there were some really neat scenes and the special effects were cool, but I wanted so much more and I just hated how the relationship went and it's, it's too wrong side of the tracks for me. And if you're going to do it right, you might as well just watch Pretty in Pink. Oh, wow. Which... Thank you for bringing that up. Remind me, the Crystal Ballroom is where they filmed the prom scene. You just okay. You can't see this because we're we're on a podcast right now. But she is making this amazing face of oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. I'm about to die because yeah. that is one of my favorite movies of all time. If she wasn't attached to the microphone cords right now, I'd be I'd like, be- bye, see you later. I got, I got some things to do. I will. I'll take you. Yeah. Um, yes. So there's. So, so you saw it once. You saw it in the theater. Yes, I okay. saw it the opening. Uh-huh. Opening night. Yes. I, I actually worked at a movie theater when it came out and it wasn't at my theater but a sister theater so I was able to get my tickets in advance went with my brother who okay. is in the film business and like well he's he edits and stuff like that but has always loved movies in our in our family that was always what we did so like yesterday we went to go see Blade Runner together you know yeah. so this is just like a huge family tradition so we went to go see it and it's like this is like an hour too long Mm -hmm. and I just didn't like the way it ended and like I said too wrong of the tracks for me too much of a trope and I have other movies I prefer if we're gonna go wrong track like Pretty in Pink there it is you know Blaine versus Ducky with the Andy I'd much rather do that okay and that one's you know tried and true so at least you have your happiness yeah okay so but if Leonardo DiCaprio asked me if I like it I'd be like I loved every second of it buddy (laughs) keep talking (laughs) Just keep talking. Yeah, I just, I just, I, you know, I love him so much. I think he, but the thing about him was he just looked like he was 12 until he was 42. And then all of a sudden he, he looks like an actual man. (laughs) And I say that with the most love that I possibly can. No, no, no. He had a baby face. Yeah. And, and, and so I just, there was just some wrong roles for him. And I think that one was a little bit too mainstream for him. Right. Um, and now we're getting into like, you know, I, I thought he was going to win his Oscar for Wolf of Wall Street. But I'll, yeah, I thought that was one of his 
better roles that I enjoyed. Right. I mean, the whole Quaalude scene when he's trying to get into the car and took him like 15 minutes to get in the car was the clip that you show <laughs> at the Oscar ceremony. So I love him. That's just not one. And here's the thing. Everyone, that was right after I graduated high school, so all the fangirls were going, and I might consider myself a fangirl of Leo, but the re- that movie was like number one for I don't know how many weeks in a row. And Way it's- too many, and I happen to know that it was Lost in Space that knocked it off the one number one spot. The, Matt, the classic Matt LeBlanc, based off the TV show Lost in Space. Wow, that's embarrassing. <laughs> or maybe a good thing, I don't know. It's embarrassing that I know that. Yeah. <laughs> But I just remember, like, younger girls, they had, like, fans going to see it yes. 13, 14, 15 times. I was like, yes. nope, once. And I've seen it again on DVD. I think I own it. I have the ticket framed, though, because I was still a teenager when I saw it and loved Leonardo DiCaprio. And I had a picture of him cut out of Entertainment Weekly with my movie ticket. I still have it. Oh, wow. I'll have to find it. I can send you the picture. Please send a photo of that. I'll have to dig for it. I just moved, so. <laughs> oh, no. Well, take your time. Yeah. Take but that's your time. a good that's a good one to say. Well, yeah. thank you so much for sharing your story. And if you would like, you can listen to Best Forever's podcast. Uh, where can they find you on Twitter? Uh, at Best Forever's Pod. And I'm also on Instagram, my webpage, Facebook, Gmail is everything is Best Forever's Pod. And I am a fan of Best Forever's Pod. So subscribe because I do it and you want to be just like me. Yes, please do it. We're all be the same thank All right. you we're gonna we're gonna go uh we're gonna go run off to the pretty pink uh, prom right now yes okay, okay bye, bye.